G'day, how you going? Ian Apples here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video. Before we get started, there's the sizes of the canvas in centimetres and inches. All right. And I've drawn something on there. And while I'm talking about that, we'll get some colours going up the screen for you as well. So for those people who want to follow this video, you can write them down, pause it, watch it a couple of times and see what we get up to, what you want to do and what you don't want to do. And then when you play and pause and paint along with it, you'll know what to do, all right? Uh, we're going to have a water scene, waterfall scene here. And it's going to all be done in acrylics. And we're going to have a bit of a sky peeking through. And it's going to be kind of looking sort of at it, but up a bit because it's a tall wall. Most waterfalls are tall, aren't they, eh? So you're kind of looking up at them like that, all stiff-necked and whatnot. And, so, and it's going to be like layers of rock and the water falling down in different ways. And I want to try and show you beginners how you can do this in a way that'll look great. And if you feel you can't do it, it just means you need to practice a few little times, okay? So come on over here and let's get started. So this is my reference picture I'm using. A good friend of mine, Temi Sharp Painting Memories, she was watching a video and she paused the video and screenshotted it, this shot. And I think it makes a good element of a painting, okay? But I'm gonna change it up a bit. You can't see no sky in here. There is a lot of glare there, but um, it's just all rock and trees and obviously in a rainforest. So I'm gonna change it up a bit. And I'm gonna have like this sky up the top here two trees like we're in there but they, they'll be different and a lot of darkness on the side and then the, the different layers of rocks where the waterfall is coming into the pool down below here okay so we'll start from the back and work our way forward so the sky is the very far back bit so we'll get that going it's not a very big sky and change it up a bit now i've just masked up the sky area so i don't get all my paint underneath there for now and down here I've got my craft paint and I've got a little bit of retarder. I don't need too much because I'm not doing a massively blended sky here. So I want to quickly just get this onto my applicating brush. This is just something from the hardware, a big two inch flat. And I'll get all this sky area primed in with this craft paint and retarder. This will just allow me a subtle sky I can get within there. So I'll crisscross this into the stitching of that canvas and then I'll just pull it through. This will make the coloured paints go onto that canvas so much smoothly and greatly. Okay, I'll wipe that brush and I'm going to pick up the cerulean blue to get our sky colour in. Now watch this, this is acrylic paint and because we've got that on the canvas first, it's going to allow this to go on there without spraying it with water, without it dragging and drying up on us. So I'll start at the top here. And look at that. It's not drying up. It's, it's got movement. It's got movability. Now crisscross it down to the horizon line there. Crisscross it right into your stitching everywhere. I love using a big putter on a brush because it doesn't muck around. Okay. Just like that. And then also having that craft paint with the retarder under there helps for this with the tip of your brush, look at that, to blend. Now it is a little bit on the dark blue side. So we'll pick up some more white. I just picked up that craft white. I'll start at the bottom and bring this up just to lighten that blue. Oh yeah. We're getting a real flavor of a sky in there now. So I'm going to massage all that in with that other layer of blue paint, all this white, because I don't want it kind of just sitting on there. I'm massaging it in with the brush. Now I'm going to pull it up to the top there. I'm happy with that blue colour for the sky. Beautiful and real. Now I've got some mid-tone grey and quinacridone magenta. I want to get a bit of that magenta and put with me grey here, because I just want a bit of a realistic polluted value at the bottom of our sky there. Oh, don't put too much magenta in there, Ian. I'll pick up some white and see if we can soften that back down. I will put more grey because I've overdone that magenta. It's very powerful, eh? Look at that. 
We'll get some more grey there. I've just got mid-tone grey already mixed in a tube. If you don't have greys mixed, you can just mix your own with some blacks and whites. There we go. Now we don't need too much of this either. I've washed that brush now and I'm going to put it on and just bring it up from the horizon, so to speak. Just from the top of the tape. Where is the top of my tape? There it is there. It's all the way up there. And just come up a little bit. So I'll get it on my tape. Now I'm going to start putting it into the blue. I'm keeping it stroke all the way across. Don't be shy to go all the way across your bloody paint. No, just get right into it. And from about there, don't go too high up in your sky. Otherwise it'll look a bit unrealistic because this is trying to put a realistic flavour in your sky. Get out of there, you bug. Bit of ash. That's it. Subtle. Now, while our sky is still wet, I'm going to grab a fan brush and I want to put on some clouds in the sky. So I'll just get my fan brush chiseled with some beautiful titanium white from the tube. That's acrylic white paint. And I have a bit of grey if I want to weather it just to offset it from that magenta colour we put in this grey here. And I want to kind of bring them over our head. Jingle it, jangle it, and get it over our head like that. Probably over here. Lightly does it. I've just stamped it on. Okay. You saw how easy that was. Practice this procedure and grab yourself a blending brush and also a cloth to wipe the blending brush at the same time. And I want to find the bottoms as I always do and just try and get some, look at that something there just like I'm just lightly touching that lightly touching it that's the bottom I'm going to wipe that build up now off the brush and I want to create some turmoil within all this leaving a good amount of brightness down the bottom of that bold shape of cloud so I can add some of the weather there and I'm just going to See this how it's all pretty much one tone? Now watch what I mean by turmoil. You're twisting it and creating different tones and values within that white paint. It's fun to learn, fun to practice, and you'll be amazed what you can put into your skies and try and capitalise on your brush movements like that. I've done these clouds many a times. Now I've cleaned the fan brush and I'm picking up some more white paint. It's up to you how detailed you want your clouds in your sky or how many clouds you want in your sky. So see, I can see a dark, a dull piece. I'll monopolise on that and get some of these ones here that I like doing. So easy to do and something big here. That'll do it. Don't overdo your sky. Sometimes you can get carried away and overdo them. And we'll try now and let the brush make the cloud don't sit there like a machine and do the brush all the one way try and get this brush and let it move and do all your work for you okay sweep them up sweep them up very whisper look at that see all that brush stroke just made those sweeping soft clouds the way they filter through the sky there and see i've left a lot of them brighter valued so i can put some weather within them the gray there we go and that gives you the sense that they're over your head there we go you get a better view up there eh? So I've just got another smaller fan brush and I'm picking up some of the straight grey now because I don't want this to clash. So I'm picking this up and let's try and put some greys in here. Just lightly does it. Look at that. You can probably just do it all with this brush if you want. I'm just finding the bottoms there and getting some little bits of grey in there. Lightly doing it. I won't go too far up the top there, but just these bigger, brighter ones. I'll try and find a, a weathered base on them. How's that looking in the monitor? That's okay. All right, I'll put that down. I'll give it a slight blend just to... What I mean by a slight blend is I'm pretty much going to stamp it. 
very softly because I don't want to push it right in and do all that work for nothing because you've squashed it too far. There we go. We're just getting rid of some of those heavy brush strokes and making it look soft. And all the brush is doing that blending for you. If you want, you can put some... Um, let's start here in the middle. Something like this right along there. Just let the brush do the applying and the blending. Just something like that all the way across there. And this just adds distance in your horizon out there. There we go. Simple but effective. Okay, we'll pull this tape off just so that we can dry our horizon line there. Just where the trees and that are going to sit over the sky. And before I do that, I'll find any ridge in the paint like so and use my gloved finger just to wipe it off. There we go, set it down. I'll wipe that, wipe that, there we go. Now I'm just going to dry that and then we'll start blocking in for the waterfall rocks. I've got me burnt umber and black. I've just got a beveled edged flat brush here. And I will use the burnt umber first just to block in the rocks so far. So we've pretty much got a setup here. They're gonna be covered in water. I wanna get the, the edge here pretty much the way I want. Up and down. And this can be your scooted back there's no retarder no medium nothing in here i'm just sort of scratching that in there i'm going to do a layer at a time so i know where my lights and darks are and you can follow along exactly how i'm doing here or you can adopt your own way that suits your style of painting getting these rocks in up there like so because there's two layers here but i'm doing them i'm painting them in I'll just sort of smooth that out a bit now. Get rid of some brush strokes, blocking it in. I'm painting them in, blocking them in, so as I know where their, where their values are. Because what I will do as well is get some of the black on my brush. And then the very bottom of that, well, hang on a minute, let's dry it. Just there. That's a good thing about acrylic too, I love is you can dry it. Now I'm getting black to separate that top rock from the bottom one. So I'm putting some black there now, just along the bottom there. You'll see what I mean. And scrumble that up into that brown. When it dries, we'll do a bit more scrumbling. Okay, now I'll do the second layer from that black. Have a bit of fun with this. Practice blocking in. And see how you go. Now I'm getting just black on that brush and the rest of the rock. I want to map in now just with the black. So mainly at the top of there. I could have, should have dried that other bit I put on there. And all the ridges within this rock system here, I'm just going to black them in like that there's a nice dark ridge there even over here can be dark um, way under here is all going to be dark around there and we're going to have some moss coming out growing on top of the rocks i'm trying to fall into the water as well and these rocks are all get this a bit darker here Grumble it, push it in the tooth of the canvas. Very dark under there now. I'll get all that darkened up. And we can add highlights back inside here 
to make things pop your lights against your darks. Now there is a big rock kind of sitting out here within the water as well. I'm getting some darker values in the front of that because the water is going to be pretty much a, a browner value. So I'm just getting darker values here within that rock. I'm kind of keeping them level with the horizon line and the formation of this rock structure here. And there's just a lot of dark areas within this rock face. It's kind of um, scalloped and um, laid in, in layers. It's a layered rock face by the looks of it in the picture to me. We've got dark here, gonna be, wherever you're having some trees are gonna be dark and that's dark there. Now I'll, I'll block it in with some brown again. Okay, I've given that a bit of a dry and I'm picking up the burn umber again and I wanna keep this on its own value and scrumble it into the black where it needs be. And we can highlight a lot of this. That's gonna be fun highlight, I love highlighting. It's great, get some of this in the darker there and see we've already, we'll start shaping this. The highlight's really gonna bring the shapes. But when you know what darker colors to put and then you'll know where your highlights are going to bring it to life. You know where you're going within your journey beyond that, within that painting. Now you can, once this painting's finished, you can pause it at the end where I whack a frame on it and get a snapshot of the finished painting. So we've got brown there. You can't see it yet, but there's brown. So let me get all this brown blocked in there and in all here and leaving some of that dark and we can highlight it. The highlights will really make those darks pop. Now I might have to get the dark and go back over it just to see. This is just burnt umber. I don't mind burnt umbers and blacks. I'd never seem to confine Van Dyke Brown in my journey, so I used to use it in my early days, um, but I don't seem to find it as much anymore, so I'm just sticking with burn umber, yellow ochres and whites. Now, I'm not sure if you know where this is going, but you'll see once we add the highlights, like I said. So we've got that there. I can add some more darker in there in those lines there, look at that. Just looks like a brown mess at the moment, doesn't it? Just getting this boulder in here. Where did I go with it? Here we go. Because our water's gonna be here, so it's coming from underneath that cliff's pocket there and into the water so it's not flat. I don't like painting flat things if I can help it. And all under here is going to be moss there. I'll just scratch that in. This is a new brush I'm using and I'm probably destroying it but who cares I feel like I'm doing a good job here. So I'm building back over the blocking in stage. Where's the, that's it, got the wrong way. Get these in and blend them. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dry this because it's, it's still a bit wet for me. So just let me blow dry this. And now she's blow dried, I can scrumble this black back where I want it. See, if this had um, retarder on it, if I retarded the whole canvas, what I'm doing now wouldn't have worked. It would have been ripping it up and making you want to pull your hair out. Really not a good thing to do. I've done that in my early days and I've learnt from it. So now I'm putting some darker values in this rock. Just give it some 
face dimensions and stuff within it down here I'm just going to spray me palette a little bit just so as I can get some movement in me brush there we go and where were we up here a little bit of darkness back in there get those dark places back can you see what I'm doing here nice and dark fade that up and there's just lots of bands of darkness behind here coming from the shadows nice and deep in there and some more here And we can probably get just the darkest bits up somewhere here where the water's going to come past it. Now I've got some yellow oxide with that burn umber I want to pull in there and mix up a lighter value of this. And I'm going to use the same brush. I've cleaned it and I want to use the same brush just to get some other light hitting that rock. You don't want it too bright and loud though, if you can help it. Now I want to look for the areas in the rock that are just lightly coming from here. Nice ridges of rock shelf coming out of there. mainly where that dark is right against that ridge there to highlight that accentuate that bit there how's that looking in them it's not too bad and we'll come along this is going to have a quite a bit of um green green moss growing over it as well get some sharp ones in there it's going to be dark in there, so just want some rocks there. I'm not really thinking. And different colours behind here will show out when we put the water on there. So I'm just getting some different values there. And we got this rock down here. I want to kind of blend that a bit. I might have to add more dark, who knows? We'll see if we can. Here we go, I'll push, come back to the canvas there. Still looking a bit mumble jumble at the moment, but it'll take shape. On the way to there as well, tapering up into that black. And we might get some light just hitting stuff here somewhere. Not too much though. I want to get a bit more dark back into this one by looking at it. All right, so I've re-darkened that. Now I just want to get the um, light gently hitting it okay we've got some there we've got pretty much a bit billowing in front of that black bit i haven't dried it because i wouldn't mind it kind of um merging in dulling down as i do it okay Well, maybe I will have to draw it. <laughs> Let your brush make all the rock bits. How's that looking in the monitor? 
Okay, I could still detail that as I go because it's going to have water hitting it. Water bouncing off that and hitting it. Somewhere there. Okay, I, I did give it a bit of a dry. Just so as I can get it to work the way I want. Sometimes it's frustrating me. I want to get some brighter bits just in here now. A little bit more brighter. Pick up some more of that. Now I'm just going to wipe the brush, pick up the white and put with the burn umber. Just so as I can get a lighter value of burn umber. So it'll be like water's reflection, reflecting on the wet rock, so to speak. And we want just the littlest bits. Yeah, just bits there. Just here and there. I oh, will have to wait for that to dry a bit, I think. Yeah, it looks a bit rocky, doesn't it, eh? That's all we want. That's all we want. Uh, where are we? I've got a nice bit here. So that's going to be covered, eh? I'm not worried about that. It's mainly here. Okay. Maybe if you want, I did it in another painting, put some of those stones under there, evaporating into that cliff, little ledge shelf in there, whatever. A bit of white. Just using the corner of the chiseled edge brush there. Because we're going to have moss in there anyway. Now grabbing some white with the yellow oxide and the burn umber that was mixed together and just mix up some of this and we'll get a couple of trunks coming up there so we'll get one probably where's that ridge there we'll get one coming from about here and just coming straight off the painting actually right there get some more i'll get the thickness of that in there the way i want it that's the thickness. I'm putting this in now because it needs to be sitting back behind the foliage that goes in later. So I'm putting that in now. And we'll get one on the other side as well. Somewhere around here, where are we? Up there. I'm going to wet the brush just a little bit to get it a bit more slightly inked up. And he's there. See that sky is reasonably dry. If it was wet it becomes a bit awkward. Now I'm going to get a bit of the darker burn umber just on that brush. Let's see if I don't have to dry it. I want this side quite dark on the, of that trunk so that lighter value is allowing this dark to sit off it. There we go. And a bit on the other side. I don't want to put edge or line edges on it though, if I can help it. Now I've got some forest green and I've got some 
yellow oxide, yellow ochre, and I've got cad yellow as well, making our greens. And I've got a waterfall mainly here, so I want some of this kind of tracing down the rock there. So I'm kind of making it vine its way down. It's kind of moss like it was in the display picture there, the reference picture there. And it's just coming and leafing out into the air, leafing off to the wall. You know how that flares out. The highlights will bring a lot more of that to life. Now you don't want to have this too loud. I'm picking up some more of the darker forest green to give it some depth. Just use whatever you can to shape it in there because your highlights are what bring this to shape, okay? This is just getting the mass of it there and it's kind of growing along here and there and coming down like this. I'll just have a sticky beak in my monitor and see how it's faring. Okay, it's, I don't want it too dark. We've got a lot coming out here as well. But I'll do that later because we've got water coming here. So I'm trying to put what's behind the water first. Now for me water, I'm just grabbing some of the white and mixing it with some of the cerulean blue just so it's a dirty white. Now I've got to start at the top here and bring all this water down over the rocks because... So we're going to start at the top, just get it a... Oh, I'll wipe some of that off the brush actually because you want to see, I'm just using a flat and this is where the water is just coming down the rocks. I do need a bit more. <laughs> All even through here. Even through here it's coming down. Water's just coming down everywhere. Uh, there's one row of rocks there. So there we go. So it's... Bring it down. Any old way. Just to that black ridge that you've created there, okay? It's nice and white against, well it looks white, but it's dirty paint actually. So this is a constant flow over that edge of the rock there. And when we do the other section, try and leave a bit of dark there. Where are we going to? We're going to about here. And we're going again. And it's going to look like with a bit of luck, water just flowing over the side of the rocks and you can get some lines coming up it as well. Break up all your brush strokes if you can. And if you're having fun, stop what you're doing and just whack your bloody kettle on, mate. Make yourself a beautiful cup of water's coming down there. Where are we to? About there, yep. So we've pretty got water there, and then it's spitting down again. Change the movement of your brush, left and right if you can, or if you feel it needs be. I've never done a waterfall like this before, so it's interesting. And obviously on this ridge here, it's just a little bit more intense so play with your paint it's dry now i've done the pretty much the top layer and the bottom layer but the bottom layer now i want to bring forward from the top layer so i'm going to use my bullshit stick and we want this bit now a bit more brighter setting that top bit back from the bottom bit here. Let's hope I know what I'm doing here. I'm just using my stick to, yeah, we'll go like that. Dab it along, pull it down. It's very dry, this paint, which is fine.
Now also just to break it up, because you've got such a few brush strokes, get some brighter values just in there like this, creating more random nature looking water coming down. Just to break up your patternized brush strokes that you might have put in there. Now before I get too carried away and lose touch with those trees, I want to get just a bit of a darker, like some branches coming out if I can without buggering up the painting. There we go. This is just a, a mix of the um, brown and the burn umber. Get a nice fat one coming here. Something coming up. Just some branches, random. I might get some coming down. And we can, if we want, put some, um, what would you say? Foliage on these if you want. See, I'm trying to do an American tree, which we don't have over here. We don't have any trees that I've ever seen in my lifetime that look like this here in Australia. So, Got something coming out here. A lot of this is going to be covered, but we need them there. So, if any of them are being seen within the um, foliage, you will see it. Let's get something maybe a couple of notches as well, you know, like little nodes where some tried to grow, bits of broken ones, just like that. Yep. Like that, maybe a bit of a nodey one here. Bit of a node, didn't quite get there. <laughs> but he came back and got back on his feet. There you go. Look at that. Just like that. And we could probably, if we want, get some more bullshit flavours in those trunks if you want. There we go. Now I'm grabbing the forest green and I'm putting, I'm using the darker one first. So I'm coming with over here and then blocking in with some darker stuff. And also there's some stuff coming from down into the painting there. Let some of that waterfall be seen there, just like that. This is the darker forest green. We can even probably put a little bit of black in that if we want. Just like that. Oh yeah, I'm loving that. Leave some sky colour through the foliage that you do. And we'll get some pretty much all the way from the top. Like we're coming down from the top now, leaving sky colour. Bulking around that trunk there, except for when you're getting near that branch. Get some out here as well, coming from the sky. Just about there. I don't know what kind of tree this is, but I hope it works. It's looking all right. We'll get some on here. This is the darker green. Some on there coming down. Sort of bowing into the middle of the painting there. I'm just using a little flat brush that turned into a scrumbler. It's had a hard life, this one. And we'll probably get something just right in front and coming over this way, right off the painting there like that, but leaving bits of sky opened up in there. The same here. Maybe a little bit coming off the painting from the sky, and then from this tr branch there. I think that's kind of doing what I wanted it. Yeah, we'll leave those dead ones there. Now continuing down here, we've got some of it growing within the dark area of the rock here. I'm putting this there now because the um, water's got to go in front of it. I wouldn't have wanted to um, paint the water and then try and get this all in between there. It's coming in off the rocks here. I don't want to destroy too much of my details I've put everywhere. And down in here, 
we're going to have some of it creeping through the black. So I'm using the darker green. Now I'm going to leave this bottom bit because I've got to put the water. I'll finish detailing all these greens up here. Grabbing the yellow oxide into that green now. This will add that dead wood colour as well, kind of flavour hopefully. Now we might have to dry some stuff, we'll see how we go. And then we're going to put this everywhere where we could see it. Not too much, just sit that darker green back here and there in front of the trunks, wherever. Beautiful, just like that, try not to overdo it. And then we've got stuff all the way down here that's been growing and dribbling on the rocks as well. Let's get some of this color over here. You can see the different greens. I know I can in real life, it looks great. And the good thing about it, it's not too loud, so it's given it that kind of a real flavour. Get it coming along wherever. It's adding dimension within all that mossy colours you put there. So when we highlight it, it'll just look bullshittingly good. So we'll just wipe that paint off the brush. We've pretty much got all that colour there. Now we're going to pick up the cadmium yellow and mix up a bit of, look at that. It doesn't have to be solidly mixed, it can be marbled. Now not everywhere, we want to kind of put stuff here and there. How's that doing? That's okay. Right over the darks. Coming down the waterfall's rocky edge there. We'll get some of this in there, not too much. And now I want some kind of something coming out of there. Just before I do, I've just noticed there, this is all too, too loud. I'm going to sink it back. I don't like it. I'll fix that later, but I want to do that while I can. Too loud. Now I'm just going to use the flat brush and the burn number on its own. And I'll map in the water, but I want to do it. I want to hold the brush level or perpendicular with the horizon line. That's way up there, okay? So I'll get this pretty much where I want it. And then I'll block it in and then we'll add the lighter and darker values to the water. There we go now, we want this to look like water because this needs to be in before the um, waterfall water goes in. I'm going to get a bit of white through it and I want to kind of stay it. There we go, look at that, yeah. Get that water looking happening to it. Bit out here as well. So it's dark, but it's got that lighter element coming through it. Get rid of those lines there. You'll play with it till you're happy with it. Now I'm just looking at the reference to get an idea where some of the lighter water is in the darker water so pretty much got some lighter areas around here mainly where the waterfall is going to be hitting in there obviously I'll just clean that brush give it a light dry and pretty much where the bank is get the black and separate the water from the land, scrumble it up into there. Use your finger if you can. 
and smudge it up. How's that doing? Is that looking all right? Yeah, I want it scrambled up in a crookedly way. So this rock's going to come down there in the water a bit, just so it's not a flat black line there. There we go. Just some darker values. The bottom of this rock has kind of lost his edge where it's in the water, so we'll, we'll try and create that back, getting some darker edges of that rock back, lower and higher within the water, but level, of course. Bit of dark within there, bit of dark within there, and a lot of dark within there, because water's going to be there anyway. Water for water. Okay, that's looking okay. Just at the very bottom lower area there. Now back to our yellowy green. And this stuff deep in here, I want to try and lightly, the light's kind of getting under there, hitting it, and it's sort of growing over those rocks, coming forward. Maybe even trying to dribble within the water there. I'm just lightly getting a bit of reflection in there if I can. And the water, We'll sink a lot of that back. Now we've got some green here. I just want to highlight some of that now and not have it so bright like it was before. We've got that one there. We've got a little bit poking down and then maybe the top of another branch coming down here. Just being hit by light. That's looking a little bit more realistic. I'm going to pick up just a bit of black on the same brush just to kill some of this cartoony flavour out of there. Okay, this is where the actual fun begins. Now, picking up the white that we had before, I'm going to pretty much, the white with the blue, I want to pretty much get one coming down from here all the way so just kind of drop it, let it fade because it's, it's, it's coming from such a height and it's going to land in the water about there, okay? So this is coming down the rocks nice and sharp there and let it come down and scraggle it like that. Is that working? Yes, it's working. See how I got that sharp edge at the very top? Now we want this kind of breaking as water breaks up, it starts turning into spray. And this brush is going to go that dry, hopefully. <laughs> it's not going to make a liar out of me. And turn into spray to about there in the, in the lake below. There we go. I'll, I'll do that later. So this is a nice bit here that's just pivoted out on its own into the water there. And I want to get, where are we? So I'll use this brush, I'll wipe it. I'll get this kind of turmoil around there and cascading out from where it hit the water. And if you want, you can even put the slightest reflection under that. nice and dark at the top and let it come down just like that boom like that see 
I have a real bad worn out flat brush. I'm gonna get some of the paint in this. Not too much. I'm gonna rub it on there so there's not much on the brush at all. Because down the bottom here, there is a lot of mist. So I'm gonna put that in there now. Try and get it everywhere where I want it. And then I'll put the water front. And this is getting a lot of mist here as well as it's as it's coming down. Like that, it's just turning into mist. There's bits here turning into mist. See, there's not a lot on this brush. A little bit more. Wipe it on the backboard there. And turn all this... Get all this agitated mist going. Very dry blending this. So I know I'm going to have another waterfall here and it's hitting this rock and we've got a bit of water coming off this rock down this way a bit but it's very misty as well. And then we've got a lot of wetness coming off the edge here. Hopefully that's looking wet. Yeah, that's looking wet. And then we've got, I'm pretty much doing it back to front. We're going to have a waterfall there. A lot of water hitting here. A lot of mist I want coming there. Coming up. Get a bit more on the brush. Wipe it off. From about here. A lot of mist that's going to happen here. Really hitting the rock there dribbling down into the water and then we're getting mist bits of water coming off these rocks here because water's just splashing and misting everywhere so I'm getting it in a straight line of the mist there and then the water will come into play hopefully okay so now we're going to get it Nice and tight up there. Bring it down and find your mist that you made there. Twist your brush on an edge. Do that. The same here. Nice and hard there. Let it break up. And as water gets to the bottom, it starts falling apart like so. Nice and tight. Oh yeah, get some water coming down. I want some hitting this rock. Bang. Yeah, that's looking all right. And then start getting this finely tuned. A lot of water turmoil there. We just got little bits coming down. Where was that other ridge? So this came down. That can sort of, there's other water there. Coming down as well. How's that looking? Yep, that's fine. I've just got to get something meeting it though. <laughs> so we'll get some of this water meeting it from that point. And it obviously hit another ledge. And we've got water coming down this rock. Okay, I'm just trying to finish up here. Water's just breaking down this rock here. Oh, that middle bit's all right. I can sort of bring him down and he can hit the rock too and disperse everywhere like that. Yeah, beautiful. It just come out from behind somewhere there. Now I want to grab that brush that I was using before just to make the mist and finish 
mystifying all this okay this is a lot of mist here but i don't want to try and kill not that i don't want to try and kill, i don't want to kill all my detail behind there as well if i can help it the darks and all that let's see if that's going to work or not yeah they're all right that's looking all right okay and we just got like these ones here they're they're turned into mist the ones there they, they just haven't got the grunt to flow as heavy water so they're mystifying and let's just see if we can get a bit of a water that's hitting the the rock there now and making ripples I don't want to do this too much I want to sink the reflection of the water down as well and that'll pretty much do it now I'll give it a bit of an autograph and before I do I'll put a couple of Australian birds up here let's see flying couple of crows or black cockatoos or whatever they are how's that looking in there did that do any justice i'm not one for putting birds in me paintings but gotta do it every now and then all right i'll just whack my signature on here and then we'll whack a frame on it and just remember all my tutorials are for sale you can message me on facebook purchase through PayPal all the links are below I want to thank all my patrons that support me every month there's a link for my patreon platform if you want to support me there every month like those other few people are doing put Steve's footprint on there as well okay let's whack a frame on that and see how she looks I tell you what that don't look too shabby eh got an outback waterfall the sort of waterfall you would see in the outback of Australia a couple of birds in the sky we've got perspective and we got a bullshittingly fantastic looking waterfall I mean my frame has covered the water up a bit because the frame would normally sit about there okay and just remember you can do that okay and like I said before check out the links in the description below share like and subscribe and uh, become a member of my art group and if you like what I'm doing be sure to tell your friends but if you don't like what I'm doing you tell everybody all right all the best goodbye good luck and good on you good on you I said good on you